Hello! How's that for a timely entrance? Ah, too much space, I just need more printers. Ah, hello everyone. Hey, um, I guess first things first, it looks like my audio is a little hot. How is it? Over boost. Let's see here. Very hot, very hot. Well, thank you. All right, let's see here. Let's drop that down a little bit. I haven't done a live stream in a long time. Um, still working out some kinks with some of the... Um, <laughs> I am actually pretty humble. Uh, and actually hate doing live streams, but um, yeah. Um, let's see here. Let me get down. Looking at my, my meters here. Is that a little bit better? Let me see here. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. How's that? Is that good? One, two, three, four, five on the five count. Good, good. Let's see. Well, even there is, I mean, you have 80% likes. I'm, I know, horrible, horrible. That's better. And the music's low enough. I can't hear the music. <clears throat> I'm not cool enough to wear headphones while I do these because that just seems weird. Five by five. Cool. Music is subtle. You, you're liking that word in the past 24 hours there, Robert. I got uh, a Popsicle branded energy drink to push me through this. <clears throat> um, I've been living on sleep, medications, and energy drinks uh, lately. So, uh, yeah, like and subscribe is one thing right there. So, I guess first and foremost, um, I'll, I'll take the stage. You guys can even talk if you want. You guys have a good conversation going already so that's awesome um, that's pretty much the meaning of everything i do is to open up the conversation i'm gonna switch over to this camera over here because i like this camera better um, but yeah so everything i do is pretty much well, hi boop, boop. you like that boop, boop. Um, <clears throat> get the conversation rolling have people converse everybody you know no matter how much i know and i'm not claiming to know a lot no matter how much i know three four five two people together are going to have more ideas, better ideas, and be able to sort out those ideas much quicker than I can as an individual. So as much as I enjoy helping people out, uh, just keep that in mind. So yeah, totally driven by you guys, totally, um, it, yeah, everything is kind of worked out for you guys. And that being said, uh, I'm going to start off this, uh, this, this particular uh, live stream, and I don't know how many people are on here right now, I'm not even going to go look, I don't really care. <laughs> uh, I'm going to paste up a Discord uh, link. Uh, now is a link to the Build a Basement Discord. I don't believe, uh, I may have posted it one other time. Uh, this link is good for seven days from today, today being the 13th of April, 2024, uh, for unlimited amount of people. Uh, so hopefully if you have good intentions, if you like helping other people, if you have problems, but you've solved other problems, or maybe you just have a lot of problems and you plan to pay it forward, uh, I do hope that you join our Discord. Uh, it's not really a place to just talk about random stuff and random channels. I do have some channels for doing that type of thing, but it's more for people to help people uh, as a community because really that's it's what I want to grow is a community of helpful people. Um, <clears throat> that being said, uh, let's see, where have you been? Let me look at some of these comments. Let me scroll back. Looks like some people have been waiting a while. I got to I gotta give some shout outs here first and foremost to Kobe, uh, Steven. Uh, Renee, uh, let's see here, who else we got, Dune, uh, Robert, Mark Davis, Mark Davis, always there, um, uh, Skyrim is here, so that's great, uh, long time no see, uh, my voice is still a little bit uh, froggy, which is kind of funny since my name is Kermit, um, but I've, uh, I've had a, um, I'll, t I'll tell you where I've been, I've had a uh, upper respiratory uh, sinus. Um, I've, I've actually had multiple things happen to me. Um, and I guess they compounded each other. I had a business trip I had to go on during all that. Uh, it gave me a sinus infection. I wound up having to take uh, steroids for that medication, get that rinsed out, whatnot. So uh, I, was, I was in bed for about a week um, and I've been down and out now for about three weeks. This is the fourth week, give or take. So I didn't abandon my channel. Uh, I'm not abandoning my try. It's actually one of the questions I get. Uh, I've been getting now simply because it's been so long, but uh, I'm not abandoning my Trident build by any stretch of the imagination. 
Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get back on my feet. Uh, today, I was up at four o'clock this morning to drive my wife and kids uh, so that they could catch a plane to California. So I am a bachelor uh, in the sense of home alone, not in the sense of single um, until next Sunday. So I'm hoping to be able to record quite a bit of content between now and then. Uh, I do have a honeydew list that uh, is on a legal pad because standard paper wouldn't fit it. <clears throat> it started off with some notepads like this, but um, the board got filled off real quick. So we went to a legal yellow pad. Um, so, you know, it was about three or four, maybe five pages. So if anybody's local to New England wants to come help me out with my honeydew list, that'd be awesome. All right, so, <clears throat> and, and if I clear my throat, I apologize, I know it's loud. Um, I'll try to actually mute if I can. If I think of it, um, but it usually comes really quick and goes really quick, so I don't know if it's worth it. You guys just cover your ears. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> let's see what the conversation is right now. Uh, you're on fire today, hot and froggy. <laughs> uh, dude, feel well, it's cool. Your name is Kermit. Uh, you were born famous. Actually, my dad was born famous, so I'm a junior. My dad, uh, my dad was a Kermit as well. Uh, back history on that. Uh, there's actually a Kermit Roosevelt, which if you're in the United States, you know the Roosevelts. Um, so Kermit Roosevelt was uh, a president's brother. And my grandmother actually, my since past, lived to 105, I think died two years ago now. Um, my grandmother Marie, um, she named my dad Kermit Paul Bollier. Uh, and I became a junior. So yeah, that's my full name too. There you go. It's the internet. You can find anything out. So, uh, let's see here. Welcome everyone. Yes, welcome everyone and anyone. Um, so, if you're not familiar with the the uh, live streams I do, I'm not like the other guys that do builds during live streams. If you want to check out builds, or if you got ideas for builds or, or ideas for videos, by all means, shoot me a comment on this video or any of my videos, or shoot me an email. Uh, my email address, and I'll post it right now. Do, do, do. Oh, I'm not even typing in the right place. Um, is Kerm at builditbasement.com. <clears throat> or uh, there's actually a channel in my Discord for video suggestions, which no one's used yet, um, simply because I haven't allowed a bunch of people. I think it's about 40, 45, 50 people in the Discord right now. Um, and most of it's basically just question and answer, but there is a channel in Discord for those that don't know or haven't joined yet to uh, make video suggestions because, again, driven by you. Um, so let's see here. What else we got going on? Uh, Kermit the Frog. Yes, that is me. Uh, -da -da -da. I'm just here for a few minutes. Busy for a top cover Q1 Pro. You sound better than my laptop sound. Well, that's odd. I wonder how that happened. Uh, geographical bachelor. Yes. Uh, hey, Robert, uh, glad you're feeling better. Yes. Uh, anyone else? Nevermore version five. Uh, I printed it too small for the V 2.4. Okay. That's it. That's it. We'll talk about that in a second. I got to talk about some Nevermores. Um, Skyrim, you know, do, do, do. Also, Skyrim, do, do, do. Yep. All right. So you guys talking about Nevermore right there. Um, uh, <clears throat> I do have some topics, but you know, by all means, flow through stuff because the more you guys are talking about things, the more we get to hang out and chat with this. Um, I would like to have everybody together just to be able to talk all the time, uh, but uh, you know, kind of hard to do. So I keep the stream open probably as long as you guys are interactive with it. Once it kind of dwindles down, I run out of topics, I'm going to cut the stream. <clears throat> so that being said, uh, never more. So love the Nevermores. Nevermores are great. Uh, constantly under new. Um, uh, builds and designs. Uh, the Nevermore Max is a awesome unit that I wanted to build at one point in time, but it requires a 300 by 300 build uh, of plastic. So, uh, although I do have at least two printers, uh, one, one actually functioning right now, two that are in different stages of assembly or disassembly, uh, that can print 300 by 300. Printing 300 by 300 in a ABS or an ASA or any other material that requires uh, relatively high temperatures in a relatively high bed 
uh, is a no-go. Uh, the most you're going to get out of a 300 by 300, and this is actually kind of a good tip, is probably around 275, 280 on there. The last 20 or so um, millimeters, you're, you're not going to be able to get to that edge. Multiple reasons for that. One is uh, heaters tend to go very close to the edges, but not all the way to the edges. So you can have cooler parts out there, uh, which may not stop you from printing it, but you will possibly get some curls. And, and part of that is due to the fact that the size of the thing you're printing, uh, the more area that you have, the wider that area is, the bigger it is, and obviously the taller you get, uh, the more pull you have on it. So it, it's just a bunch of things that are going to happen to get there. You really need a 350 plus to build that. But they do make a smaller one that I do plan on building. Um, I haven't done yet. So uh, never, uh, never more. So yes, exactly, Renee. Nevermore is a filtration part for the Vorn. So it's, uh, let me throw a link up if anybody wants it. Actually, I'm not gonna throw a link up on that. You guys can look it up yourself. You guys have Google. Um, so Nevermore is an activated charcoal filtering system. Uh, some of them are capable of blowing uh, exhaust out of the printer. Uh, most of them basically filter the air inside the printer. So two functions to that with the Nevermore. One is it removes, and when I say removes, um, you know, I, I have no way of testing it. So don't, not the gospel, go by what I read, what other people have done. Uh, it removes particulate matter from the air. You know, those little microplastics that everybody's talking about these days. Um, fumes, um, you know, gaseous VOCs, things like that uh, from the printer so that it's a little bit healthier to be printing in a closed environment or near where you're um, working for periods of time. I'm going to mute my mic real quick here. So it makes it a little bit easier to do that. But number two, and I think more important, um, because you can always exhaust your printer if you wanted to, uh, outdoors or, or something like that, is that it moves the air around on the inside of the printer. So <clears throat> unless you have an active chamber heater inside of your printer, um, the heat is going to be different in different areas of your printer. So a Nevermore moves the air on the inside of it more so than the in induction that's going to happen from the hot and the cold of the uh, heated bed and whatnot. Uh, so you have more of a uh, you know, a mixed soup, if you will, of warm air inside your printer, make it work a little bit better. So that's what Nevermore is. Anyways, there's a bunch of different styles and the different sizes. I'm not going to drone on and on about those. Uh, there you go, Renee. Thank you for posting that link on the Nevermore. <clears throat> I was going to post this link because I'm so funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really not asinine. I'm, I'm very helpful. Trust me. Um, that's, that's why these people are here. Uh, let's see. Oh, and tool head tool board. So, uh, the Nighthawk USB tool head tool board. I have one or two that a certain somebody in Ohio hasn't shipped me yet, but I basically told them to hold my shipment. It's not a big deal. Um, very interesting product. Uh, I, you know, here's the thing. Um, a lot of the CAN bus products that are currently out or that, that have been out before the Nighthawk are capable of doing CAN bus, but they're also capable of doing USB. You could do it before, but the Nighthawk kind of simplified that and went straight to the USB, which in actuality, uh, USB has magnitudes greater bandwidth than CAN bus. Uh, CAN bus was always meant to be a very simple communication protocol for um, industrial settings, vehicles, things like that. It was never really meant to use in a printer per se, uh, but just like everything else, things get adopted in when people think they have a good idea. Um, USB, I think, is probably a better way of doing it because you can put a little USB hub up with that tool head and then you widen up the whole world for everything you can do. Those nozzle cams, um, you know, your... Um, anyway, you, you, you can do anything you can do in USB, you can now do at the tool head using something like the Nighthawk or even a CAN bus slash USB tool head. Uh, so that's pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> when I get one in, I'll probably do a full review of the actual unit. Uh, so that should be coming as well. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let me check these uh, notes real quick, see if there's anything else that's worth talking about real quick. Uh, let's see here. Talking, I just slap a carbon filter from, and I have no more smell. Yeah, I, the, the Voron 2.4 specifically has a filter uh, built into it with a fan and everything like that. Uh, and that's probably plenty fine. In terms of the uh, Nevermore, 
But the Nevermore just takes it to another step. So basically, as opposed to using like that Brillo pad or that, um, I can't think of a good non-offensive word for what it looks like. Um, it use, they use actually pellets of uh, activated charcoal uh, in a bag. Uh, so it, it has more surface area uh, and it's got more ability to do it so it should last a little longer. So <clears throat> the PSA on filtration systems in general across the board, I feel like I should move. Um, and that is that uh, if you don't change your filter media, and when I say that, I mean your, your filters, if you have paper, filters or uh, fiberglass filters they're made out of different materials and your activated charcoal at a, you know, a regular basis you know like every one three months six months whatever it is you're really going to lose the effectiveness of that especially the charcoal filter because the way that that works uh, think of it as a big sponge on a microscopic scale uh, that is attracted to VOCs uh, volatile organic compounds and as they flow by, they basically fill in the voids of that activated charcoal, which again, looks like a little sponge. Once a sponge gets full, like a sponge full of water, it won't take anymore. Everything just floats around it. So you're really getting nothing out of it. So that's my little PSA for that real quick. Uh, let's see here. Welcome to those that joining still tricking in. Yes, thank you, Renee. I now have carbon pouches. Good, carbon pouches better. Uh, never use carbon filter. My two want to do more. Maybe consider installing carbon filter in the future. Eh, good idea. I haven't used mine yet. Um, yeah, neither do I. Uh, no, I um, I print I print mostly ASA, ABS. Actually, I print a bunch of different stuff. But I'd say mostly um, a, ABS and ASA. Uh, and I don't use a filtration system on my printer. Now, if I was printing more polycarbonate and nylon and specifically nylon or, or anything with a lot of uh, carbon fiber or glass fiber in it um, i would consider doing something more but i also don't spend a ton of time in the space while i'm printing uh, in the space i'm in is probably about you know 300 or so square feet but it's wide open to the rest of my basement through a passage that's in that direction um, so the airflow is pretty good down here uh, on top of that, I actually have a wood stove, or it's actually a pellet stove that sucks in air uh, through that and exhausts it with the, um, with the exhaust of the pellet stove. So the air is moving down here quite a bit, uh, and it's also below my living space. So, you know, I could do something. I haven't, you know, it, it's, a, it's a personal decision. Uh, if you're worried about it, do something. <clears throat> uh, I do have a filter on the floor that runs sometimes. Good idea. Good idea. Whoa. My primary interest is air circulation. Yes, for the Nevermore. Um, so if, if that's your primary consideration or, or, or um, interest, uh, consider just putting a fan inside of your printer. Uh, you know, you can easily take uh, even off of your fans, and it's probably not a bad idea, the fans, if you're running a Voron 2.4, your side fans, your, your uh, cooling fans for your electronics, you can take another pin out from that add a fan to the inside of your printer uh, and it, it set it in a corner pretty much your front right corner or your um, somewhere in that area you don't want it blowing directly on your printed area but you basically can get it so it's moving air around inside of there but you do want it printing or blowing air from underneath your your bed uh, it will take a little bit longer for your printer to heat up because now it's heating up the air as much as it is the bed to a certain extent uh, but you will quite possibly have some slightly better prints. <clears throat> 3D printers. Uh, so what about Trident Voron upcoming Sovol? Uh, need some spending, guys. Uh, so actually, uh, one of the big things I want to talk about today, uh, let me get to the right screen here, uh, was, and kind of jumping around here, nice melts for your bed fans, yeah. One of those things was... Um, uh, if I had any, 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 any tire connection with the Voron folks, which I don't, um, would probably get me in hot water because I want to talk a little bit about the state of 3D printing and specifically um, some thoughts on where things are, especially for people that are just getting into the hobby or people that are thinking about getting into the hobby. Um, take a drink real quick. I'm going to actually move over to... Oop, not that camera. 
we're going to move over to here. <clears throat> uh, so I guess first and foremost, uh, this is uh, my website, which there isn't much on here, but uh, if people are interested, we can start doing stuff here. I do have a sister channel on my channel uh, called Beyond the Basement, if any of you guys are interested. Uh, I haven't done much with that yet, but basically it's where we're going to do some builds. Right now I'm working on a pinball, uh, video pinball machine uh, that, and when I say working on, I mean I haven't touched that in three weeks either, but um, building that and I build some arcade machines, I have a home theater, I do a bunch of stuff anyway. So uh, that stuff could be on here, but it's also on the other channel I have, like I said, called Beyond the Basement. So uh, yeah, so somebody brought it up, so here we go. I've already was looking at a few things and what I want to talk about is the state of pre-manufactured um, low cost or moderate cost printers that don't require assembly. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because I believe we've reached a point now where, and, and, and this is something that's going to go back and forth over time because the maker community is always going to create and do things quicker than a manufacturing company can because they need to do retooling, they need to do redesign, things like that. So modifications and integrations of those modifications are going to always be quicker on the maker side. However, we've now gotten to a point where you can buy a pre-made, pre-configured printer <clears throat> for less than the parts to build your own printer and that printer to be of similar quality. Uh, and when I say similar quality, in some ways I mean it's of better quality and in other ways I mean it might be a little bit lesser quality. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the only thing that, that, that bothers me, and it doesn't really bother me, but could be an issue, is the fact that repair parts for some of these manufacturers aren't aren't as easy to get as you'd like. So specifically, this is the, uh, the Sobel. Um, this is the Tribute 2.4. Uh, I don't know how many people knew about this, but I assume that's what you were talking about a few moments ago. Uh, so what they've done is they've gone ahead and they've pretty much, and I'm making air quotes, I know you can't see me, and I don't mean this as being a derogatory thing, but they've copied the 2.4 in terms of most of its kinematics, uh, motion, software, uh, and to some extent the hot end as well. And they're packaging it together and selling it as a tribute printer. And they're calling out the fact that it's a tribute printer. So... <clears throat> Back to what I was saying, their plan with this is to be able to do this for around $600. Now that's dirt cheap comparatively. Um, let's see what comments say right now. Uh, very good time to getting into the hobby, yes. Ah, uh, that thing. Talk about some name drops, yes. Very, so many options, yes. Uh, and there, so. Spend triple for the upgrades, bought Q1. <clears throat> ABS no one blow me away, yep. Cardboard box even has a message, tribute to the Voron, yep. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> and that's just one. And, you know, that that's not even my favorite per se. Um, I got a couple more we're going to look at here in a second, but just talking about that for a moment. The problem has become uh, that whenever you mass produce or manufacture a product in a factory, <clears throat> you're going to be able to over time produce that product for less money just because of the, the economics of, of doing it in scale. Uh, LDO produces a very nice kit and it's of relatively high quality because they're doing it at scale. If they weren't doing it at scale, that kit would cost probably one and a half to two and a half times what it costs now. Uh, the only other way to get around that is to do it out of inferior or inexpensive parts which would be, you know, to some extent what you're looking at when you look at AliExpress or the Formbot kits and things like that. So there's only two ways of doing that. Well, three if you count the manufacturer thing. So you have, the, you have the, the, the scale, you have the cheap parts, or you have the complete maker-made product, which unfortunately we, we've gone beyond, for the most part, being able to make in-house your own printer 100% because 
there's some things you can't make at home. You can't make extrusions at home. I mean, you can buy raw extrusions, cut them and do those types of things. But once you put the time into cutting those extrusions, tapping those extrusions, doing all that stuff, assuming that your time is worth something, you've probably spent more money doing that than it would have been just to buy them the way they are. So um, let me look at comments real quick. Guy News was talking four and a five for the batch and 600 to start. Yep. Nope. Oh, wrong one again. Uh, so there. So <clears throat> this is the Tribute printer. Uh, so they're, they're making some pretty obscene claims here in terms of speed. Uh, acceleration of 40,000 millimeters second second. Um, so, you know, I, I take that with a huge grain of sand. I will tell you that the mechanics... In the motion systems on most printers, uh, assuming that the hot end can keep up and assuming that everything's tuned properly, can get close to that. But to say that right out of the box, I, that would be highly impressive if that is an actual decent print. Uh, which brings me to another quick thing real quick before I jump to the next printer is speed isn't all it's cracked up to be. Because, you know, yeah, you can get speed. You can get stuff like this 40,000 millimeter second second. Um, but the problem with that is one quality two is how strong that part will be. Now I, you know, I print some knickknack or some, you know, little things that don't really need to be strong, but for the most part, I like printing things that have mechanical, um, you know, they're mechanically sound when you print things extremely fast, there's a higher tendency that your layers aren't going to bond together very well. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that you're pushing things to the extreme. So if you're just looking to print things fast and you want actual mechanical usable parts, uh, I, I ratchet it back half ways. You know what, change this to 20, change this to 20 minutes for the benching, call it good, you'll be happy. Um, and it's not going to kill you to, to wait a little bit longer. So that was the first one. Somebody mentioned the Solvol, so I want to talk about it real quick. Um, I don't necessarily buy that it's going to actually be this price. Uh, I'd be willing to bet that MSRP, um, if they can do this for under eight hundred dollars, it would be amazing. Uh, if it if it's street if it's sold on street for for eight hundred dollars, I would be I'd be pretty happy at six hundred dollars. Uh, assuming, you know what? Maybe maybe I'll reach out to Solval. Actually, you guys start a petition. Have Solval send me one of these things. Uh, and I will, I will give it away after I, uh, do some testing with it and whatnot. Uh, and I'm saying this half jokingly, but I just don't believe that out of the box, you'll get this performance for this price. If they can, if they can pull that off, this will be the printer to have. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to jump a little bit here to this right here. So Creality launches their, uh, color 3d printer 10th birthday. So this is the K2, um, and again, we're, we're looking at printers here that are in the same ballpark of price between $500 and $1,000. Uh, $1,000 is my cutoff point in terms of printers because once you get above that, you're looking at high-end uh, or more high-end printers or a Voron kit. Uh, most Voron kits are you know around that $800 to $1,000 depending on where you're getting it. But this is pretty amazing. So they're coming out with this K2 printer, um, which includes a side car uh, that you can you load up to four different colors into it uh, and this is very reminiscent of what bamboo is doing as well and, and prusa for that matter um, they're, they're even using the right here it's not like you would be able to read the bamboo rf tags information proprietary but they're coming out with their own library of high speed filaments so uh, what manufacturers are going to start doing now and i guess this is turning a little bit into a news thing is it's a big trend right now for the past five years or so for businesses in general to move away from profitability on the products they create, but basically tying people back into the product long term. So uh, selling services or products that require, you know, re repurchase over time, because you're, you're going to be hard pressed to have somebody spend, you know, $3,000 on this printer. But over the course of time, if you sell your filament for an extra, you know, 30% per roll and you have tens of thousands of people buying rolls, you know, especially if they have multiple colors, because if you have four colors and you want to have four colors, that's four rolls that you need to have and you need to maintain. Uh, you're not printing everything in black, you're not printing everything in red or whatever your favorite color is. You're now printing four different colors consistently. 
that's quite a bit of maintenance you're going to wind up doing. And when I say maintenance, I mean not maintenance as in maintaining the printer, but maintenance in terms of buying filament to keep it fed. They're saying 600 millimeters per second on this, which is more in line with, uh, with reasonable. Um, <clears throat> but very interesting there as well. Uh, and I am actually, personally, uh, I'm a pretty fan of, I'm a pretty big fan of uh, Creality. I think they were one of the stepping stones that allow a lot, or allowed a lot of people to get into 3D printing. Uh, I think without Creality and without Creality making the printers that they made, I don't know, in the past probably five years now, six years ago, um, you know, there was the lulls bot and some other things out there, but they were extremely high priced or extremely complicated to get running. Uh, Creality came along with their, uh, with their um, uh, Ender 3, uh, Ender 5, even Ender 5. This is actually Ender 5 right here. Um, and <clears throat> for limited or low money, you can get into the printing and it wasn't complicated. It wasn't difficult. An assembly of the kit, kit it was pre-assembled, but there's some things you had to put on there. It was relatively easy. Let's see here. <clears throat> What do we have for comments? Uh, let's see. Xbox makes money on games, not the actual con the actual console. It's yeah, uh, just like that. Ender three is now uh, is how I got in the hobby. Mods taught me much more. Uh, I'm one of them. Yeah. Oh, I used to work for Epson. They actually pushed and quietly supported tank printers because they were taken by uh, the cartridge sales. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and that's actually the exact same model. I, I will say, the. Um, the printer manufacturers, you know, the, the, the desktop uh, computer printer manufacturers are probably the pioneers of the model where you sell a device at no profit or uh, negative profit. You know, I think back, um, <clears throat> actually, Epson, yeah. I think back, I think my first Epson printer I had, it was something 600 or, or something. I'm thinking way back now. This is probably 20 nine years ago uh it was my first color printer everything looked like garbage out of it unless i printed on the special photo paper that i had it was just when that stuff started it was probably 96 97 ish around that time period but um i can recall uh back then you know the the printer itself would cost three four five hundred dollars which is more money than it is today but the ink cartridges were thirty dollars a piece, and they 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 don't put a lot of ink in an ink cartridge. We're talking about milliliters. Uh, and, and fast forward all the way today, where they're selling you a printer for a hundred dollars or less. I mean, I've seen Black Friday deals where you can buy a printer for around fifty dollars, and they come with starter tanks, which is basically just enough to get you going so that you don't, you know, throw it away. Um, I've also personally. Uh, and I, I say it's a little bit of shame, but I've had printers that I've purchased that I've gotten so cheap that when I go to buy ink for the printer, um, it's financially some more sensible to throw away the printer, like I was saying, and buy a whole new printer and you get new print heads, you get, you know, everything's brand new. Um, so that, that's kind of a model that was pioneered, I think, for the most part by these folks. It's also something that's used by your providers, your service providers, your cable providers, your internet service providers, your cellular providers. Um, think back to the early 2000s when uh, you know you had ringback tones or you had special ringtones you could put on your phone, but you had to buy them from your cell phone carrier because you didn't have the internet on your phone. Some of those things they charge you monthly for, you know, like $3.99 for a special ringtone or, or things like that. Those are the types of services where, hey, $3 isn't a lot per month, adds up over time but it's not a lot per month so why not just do it you know if you got tens of thousands of people buying something and 50 percent of them or 20 percent of them buy something like that that's a lot of income coming in over time so it's amazing and you know and here's the thing is i have no problem with it as long as you know what you're doing as long as you realize that as a consumer uh and you know the manufacturer doesn't do anything that is um, um underhanded i think that's a fine place to be in because i do believe that manufacturers need to turn a profit so that they can create more products or put more additional engineering to the products to make them better. Now, if they don't do that, I have a problem with that. You know, if you just sit on your laurels and do nothing and hold patents, um, I have a big problem with that. It's, you know, I don't like patent squatters. I don't like people that build off of something that don't continue to, you know, modify and build and make things better because there's always room for improvement. Uh, let's see here. 
I gotta mute my mic again. I gotta cough. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh, XP 600, 800. I did upgrades, computer repair, uh, manual documentation. That's probably what it was. Um, I like the printer. Uh, and it was really good for the time. But now thinking back on it, I remember it. And I remember the printer paper too. It was almost like plastic. They didn't have the photo paper they have today. It was like plastic. Um, and if you printed on the wrong side of it, man, did you wind up with a mess. Uh, let's see here. Uh, dang you old. Yeah, dang I old. <clears throat> 46. Uh, be, be turning another year older here in August. We'll do a birthday stream possibly. Uh, I don't do a lot of live streams. Uh, let's see here. 20 cc's. For 90, yep, I agree. Uh, it, it, there was a funny thing. An article that came out maybe a decade or so ago about the fact that printer ink costs more than blood, uh, you know, human being blood. Uh, and that's 100% accurate. Uh, I do have a, um, sorry, I have a Canon uh, tanked printer right now. And what that likes to do, now this is this is funny. Um, and we're not talking about 3D printers right now. We'll get back to it in a second. And we'll talk a little bit about the summer too. But um, my Canon printer, what it likes to do is obviously unless you print all the time sometimes you gotta clear out the the uh, ink ink jets you know the heads the little nozzles because they're very microscopic and it has a sponge in the bottom of it to collect that ink when you do that type of thing but the sponge has a finite amount of room in it kind of like the carbon filters once you fill the sponge the printer goes into an error mode which requires it to go back in for service unless you know how to reset that <clears throat> You can figure out how to reset it. Again, Google's your friend, but uh, it's just another way that they they tie you back into it, whether it be by the ink or something else. There's always a mechanism there, right? Uh, let's see here. They sell for an actual less so the company can write off. Yeah, that's true. You can write something off if you sell for uh, less than profit. Although it does start to look a little shady over time. Uh, I did the same thing at my electronic shop. Sell, lose, charge, and time service. Yep. How many builds are you doing? I will tell you in a second. Ink cards have a chip tracking usage. Empty for, yeah. <clears throat> yep. Um, like I said, uh, ink tank one I have now doesn't have chips in it per se because you don't you don't actually fill it. You just fill it up with the liquid ink, which is kind of nice. Uh, and it's worked pretty well. This is probably one of the best printers I've ever owned in terms of that just because I know how to reset it. Uh, I know how to get in the service mode and reset it for the sponge. Um, but yeah. So how many builds do I have going on right now? Well, um, if we're talking about 3D printers, I have the Trident build, which is right there. Uh, that is my Trident, and it is right where I left it off in my videos. Um, it is hurting to be worked on, and hopefully if, uh, if the light shines properly on me, I might be able to get uh, some headway on that, maybe even get it mechanically built this, uh, this week. Uh, I also have the Super Voron, which <clears throat> I don't have a camera on it and I don't have anything up, but the Super Voron is a 2.4 rebuild from a Formbot kit where I repl I'm replacing all the motors, <clears throat> replacing almost everything except for the frame, um, and it's going to be for, built for speed, uh, pretty much. It's a blacked out Voron. Um, I don't have the panels out. I'd show you the panels if I had those out, but basically it's a blacked out using uh, acrylic, blackout acrylic uh, with graphics on it. Um, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. And um, other than that, those are the two printers I have building right now. Um, in, in working right now, I have my 2.4, my Minion printer, uh, and I have my V0.1 slash 259er. Uh, that is a modified V0.1 uh, with some modifications to bring it back up to the point two. I also have my Ender 5, uh, which I'm trying to decide what to do with, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> I, may, I may see, that may be a little fun side gig project where I don't document the whole thing, but I may see what I can make out of the Ender 5 um, without much direction. I'll also base it from scratch, do my own design, stuff like that. That's probably going to be... Um, six or so months down the road, but uh, that might be something I do. So speaking of that, let's talk about summer for a quick second. So I live in New England. Uh, I live in Maine, uh, in the United States, and we have all four seasons here. And we're in spring, although it still feels like we're on the border between spring and winter, which we kind of are. Um, so 
I will forewarn everybody right now, if you haven't been to my channel before, you haven't checked out my videos, if this is new, uh, and speaking of which, if you are here for the first time and you know you go and check out the channel, subscribe to it, like it, like videos you watch, it helps out tremendously. Um, super thanks are awesome if you find a video that helps you do something or you know helps you out to, to figure something out. Um, any dollar amount's great, it helps out uh, to pay for all the stuff here that lights and cameras and computer and you know editing gear and microphones and whatnot. Uh, even printer filament and whatnot. So uh, if you do that, that's awesome too. Uh, Discord, I'll print the link up there for the Discord again. Let me see here if I got that. Yep. Uh, so that Discord link right there is good for seven days unlimited. I don't often give out or hand out uh, links to my Discord. Um, it's a very uh, community focused Discord for people to help people. So keep that in mind if you do decide to join. Um, don't. Um, I don't want it to be a big rowdy party like the Voron Discord or some other places. And nothing against those Discords that start off really helpful and whatnot. It's just so many people on them that makes it difficult. Uh, so anyway, summertime. So uh, with the four seasons, with summer being the nicest season for getting outside and doing things, and pretty much the only season for getting out and doing things, because in the spring we had a lot of mud and whatnot. And in the fall, you know, cleaning up after all the leaves and things like that. And in the wintertime, it's just plain cold outside. Uh, so my content i know i know it says it sounds funny to say this right now because of you know my issues i've had here in the past couple uh not months but a couple of weeks a few weeks a month or so um is is usually goes downhill in terms of how much i make and it doesn't again one of the reasons why i'm doing this video it doesn't mean i'm going to stop making videos it doesn't mean that i'm done or i'm going to not finish a project or something like that it does mean that summer coming, I probably uh, will try to still get a video out every week, but there might be some other stuff going on that stops me from doing that. I usually take a camping trip with my family, things like that. Uh, me getting sick here recently was unexpected, so I didn't have an opportunity to talk to anybody or tell anybody about that, um, understandably, uh, except for a couple posts on my channel, which means if you were a member of my channel uh, and you were subscribed to my channel and you go over there I, I do make posts over there once in a while what's going on in the back end with my life or or what i'm actually doing so um all that being said in a nutshell summer's coming get outside have fun stick with 3d printing as well do stuff like that but get outside and do some good stuff stay healthy you know exercise that type of thing so i'm gonna get back over to printers here uh let's see here all wheel drive awd all wheel drive what is Alex talking about? Uh, download content on games. Yes, same thing. Uh, let's see. Waiting on Trident. Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about now. On the printer. Uh, on the uh, Super Voron, uh, possibly. Uh, when I first considered doing it, when I pulled that printer apart, AWD wasn't something that was around. Um, but um, it could be. So I have a. I have, there's, there's only one issue I have with the AWD. Uh, in terms of speed, if you have high torque, high, uh, um, high current motors uh, to start off with, I don't see a huge step up for going AWD because one is the reliance on the fact that your steppers now have to be to another nth degree accurate to each other uh, versus if you just have two drive motors. Uh, so I'm still a little bit out on that, but we'll look into that. That's uh, something to consider, definitely. I'll see here. I'll see. I'll catch up on this and we'll get back over. I got some more printers to look at with you guys. Um, how does the build process for the try and compare the Vorn, uh, the Vorn printers I've constructed? <clears throat> uh, the Trident so far has been relatively easy, to be honest, although it's taken me just as long as any other printer because, you know, life. Um, but that being said, um, you know, the frames on a Vorm printer are pretty much the same, uh, with the exception of the V0. If you're thinking to build a V0, think about it before you do it. Uh, I, I really, what is this line across my face? I really, I really don't know what this line is. All right. I really, um, I really enjoy my V0. It's great to print small parts and you can print just about any part. Actually, I think it's specifically able to print any part for a Warren 2.4 on a V0. 
uh, with the exception of the, um, you know, the, the, the skirting and maybe some other parts like that that aren't necessary for the printer to run. Uh, but it is a pain in the rear end to put together because of the fact that there's no, uh, you know, slot nuts, there's no roll nuts. You're using preloaded nuts or preloaded nut holders into it. Uh, which means that everything needs to be planned well in advance. You can't add an onion something if you forget it. Plus you're just preloading, preloading. I mean, there's probably 200 or so nuts that you need to slide into the extrusions in advance before you put something else together. And even though it's a much smaller printer, uh, it is more of a pain to get in there and work on it. So uh, 2.4 is probably in uh, the higher. I would actually put the Voron Zero as the most difficult printer that I've ever put together, uh, which was wholly unexpected by, by, by me, um, and probably unexpected for me to say that, but to me, it was the most difficult one to put together. Uh, then I'd put the 2.4 underneath that, and then the Trident would be underneath that by some, and you know, that's where I'm at. So, there you go. Uh, let's see here, trying to put it so far. Uh, when you, on your Triumph build progress, I'm building a Triumph 300 and you come on really valid design choices. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sanklet. Sanklet, Sanklet S. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, <clears throat> I, I try to. So if you, it's actually one of the reasons why it takes so long for me to put together this Trident. Uh, I decided from the get-go that I was going to build the stock Trident, stock Trident, but add mods as I go as well. It, the, 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 one of the key things I tell people when they're building printers for the first time is that stick, stick to stock. And I say that because there's no manual for mod. Uh, there's a stock manual for that build and it, it goes through and it's pretty accurate. It's pretty, pretty good. We'll say it's 90, 95% good, you know, in terms of there, there are some things missing or that could be better, but I have opinions. Other people have opinions as well. It's all different. Uh, but if you go stock, it makes it easy. But the problem with that also is there are some modifications that would require you to do a fair amount of disassembly or to go backwards on your build to add those modifications. So what I've done on this build, if you haven't watched it, which I think you guys are kind of core um, to my channel, so maybe you are watching them uh, or have, uh, is I actually, any part that I do as a mod, I build, I also build the stock part as well. Uh, just so there's a reference of how to build that part, even if I'm not using it. And I completely, you know, I, I state it and I say it and I do it multiple times while I'm doing it. This is the stock part. This is how it goes together. This is what I'm going to be building. And this is the reason why I'm doing it. And you, you make a choice because I guess, you know, and we're going to, again, we're going to get back to those other printers real quick. But um, I guess one of the best things about building a printer is you get to choose what you want to do for modifications or for build size, things like that. So that's, that's huge to some people. Um, but it's just like a car, right? I mean, could you build a car? Yeah. Does it make sense to build a car? Not so much. hundred years ago? Yeah, maybe, you know, um, but it's, it's progression. So check out these real quick and let's see here. V0, V2, Delta needs love, old maker form. Oh, there we go. Those are all your printers. Nice. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of printers. Um, I don't run a print farm. I, I build printers for fun, uh, and I, I print off stuff that I need and I make videos and I got a honey do list. That's longer than my arm. Like I told you before, and I make other stuff too. So I've got too many hobbies to start off with. So running a print farm is not a hobby. I want lucky living in the South of Spain. You are very lucky. Uh, I will take your home address and I, I will come visit you. Um, I have this week that my wife is gone, so just email me. Don't do that. Just kidding. Uh, let's see here. Yes, Formo is warm. Speed, yes. Uh, still going black. So, uh, Mark Davis, <clears throat> it's a very good question. Uh, I would really like to build a black box printer. Uh, there are at least two things holding me back right now. Uh, three, actually. One... Uh, I need to build what I've already started, uh, and I'm not good at, at finishing things before I jump into the next thing, so I'm holding myself to that. There's nothing you can say or do that will make me not do that because I really need to do that for me. Uh, two is um, the, the current, and I haven't talked to Chris a lot about it, and it's actually made a hell of a lot of progress, and we can look at that when we're looking at printers 
on the uh, configurator that he has for that printer. Um, I feel like I can move this camera. There we go. Better. Um, I feel like um, there was some work to be done on the configurator for that printer because it was complicated and difficult to see what you're actually getting. Uh, it will do up to five heads in its current state, multi-filament, multi-color, multi-material, whatever you want. And what I wanted to build is a three head multi-filament uh, unit and I hadn't decided exactly. And I got to talk to Chris a little bit about, you know, which, which parts to choose to do that. Cause I don't think it's outlined very well on the website. I'm going to take a quick drink or I'll lose my voice. <clears throat> so, um, yes, I, I'd like to build a black box. First and foremost, need to finish what I'm doing. Secondly is he's still working out some of the kinks I feel on the configurator and I haven't asked him because I'm afraid to as to uh, how many kits he's sold and how the feedback has been um, but I will be doing that soon and I guess last but not least is it's very expensive to build um, I think last I looked it was going to cost me south of 2500 US dollars to build it so somewhere between 2500 and probably 2800 dollars give or take uh, it might be upwards of 3000 so um that's a substantial chunk of money uh for a solitude youtuber that only does this as a hobby so those are all things that are holding me back a little bit um yeah uh let's see here can you say uh let's see uh can you say what you think about the new digital stepper drivers um <clears throat> so Anything that has feedback is going to be good for the, you know, the, when you say digital stepper driver, you're talking about the, the servo style uh, drivers. They have feedback. So um, I think we're going to see a progression in the hobby. And, th and those types of things, like I was saying, that you're going to see quicker in the, in the hobby market than with the manufacturers because they're easier to integrate. So what that, what that means specifically is if there is a fault in a movement, um, the, the driver has a loopback system that allows it to basically report that to the MCU. MCU then can make calculations to fix that issue or basically error out. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, I think once you have that, you also move into a place where you can have additional speed. But what you got to realize or what everybody needs to realize is speed isn't just about your stepper driver. It isn't just about uh, your hot end and it isn't just about your, um, motion system on your printer. It's a combination of all those things, including the MCU. So you need an MCU that can process the commands quick enough. You need a motion system that can accurately move the printer quick enough. They need a hot end system that can heat up enough filament to put it down uh, and put it down fast enough using the extruder that you have to, to stay with everything. And on top of all that, you have some finite things that come into play, such as, you know, layer adhesion times and things like that. Um, <clears throat> You know, like in, in, uh, in, in, um, um, in your slicing software, actually I don't have the screen to share, uh, but in slicing software, one of the things that you'll find often, uh, and I know it's in Orca specifically, but you have minimum layer time. And the reason why they do that is twofold. One is to ensure the fact that your layers solidify enough so that when you put more filament on it, it doesn't cause the previous layer of filament to melt. So you get sagging and things like that. But it's also so that those layers can stick together. Cause if you don't have that, you might as well not be printing anything. So um, that's just a nutshell. And that's something we can talk about more as things, you know, things progress. Uh, read again, read again, install nuts because you missed one. Yeah, it drove me nuts installing those nuts. It was pretty nuts. Uh, I did V0 Kenamod in the past winter. Love it. You have to look ahead and make sure you don't miss a nut. Yeah, instructions are good. Preloading nuts. I agree. Uh, and I printed when I did. Uh, if you do build a Warren Zero, uh, and you don't, I think I think LDO provides some, but not all. These metal bars. They're um, they're pretty thin. I don't have anything like it that I can kind of show you. I'm trying to find some thin piece of metal, but they're pretty thin. They fit inside the extrusions, and they they're tapped. Uh, with with uh, threads uh, They provided some of those for some of the extrusions, but not all of them But you can 3d print uh, either single nut holders or long nut holders uh, when you build a v0 those help out tremendously 
but still it's tedious it's tedious as all hell um uh, let's see here <clears throat> all right i'm gonna jump over the prayers there's, there's a lot of comments here but let me let me jump back over to this real quick i will come back to comments here in a second um tom's hardware is yelling at me about uh, cpus and gpus and by no means am I advertising Tom's Hardware, but they, uh, they have a pretty nice website. I've been looking at Tom's Hardware now for a decade, I'd say. Uh, I'm going to jump backwards now to the K1 Maxwick Creality. And the reason I'm doing that, uh, and, and this is all part of the, uh, the, the fact that, you know, I don't know if it makes sense to build a printer these days, in all honesty. Uh, I think there's a lot out there that you can do a lot with. Um, you know, the, the, the K1 printer is a nice printer. It's fully enclosed. It's capable of printing multiple materials, has a hot swap or a uh, quick swap nozzle. So, I mean, it's got all the things that you'd be looking for in a normal printer. You know, it, again, they're pushing out the 600 millimeters per second squared max printing speed, which, again, take with a grain of salt. Um, one, if it can do it, great. Two, can it do it well? And three, does it make sense? And finally, four, how strong are those prints? Uh, clog free extruder kit. I mean, these are basic things, but the, the fact they're providing a camera, uh, carbon fiber fill filament supported. <coughs> I don't know if they're only speaking of theirs or not, but again, very nice printer. And then if we do buy it now on one of these, we're looking at just a smidge over 550 US dollars. And, you know, you're not going to find a kit for a Voron printer for $560. You're, you're not going to find a kit for any printer I'm aware of, all included. Uh, that means basically all your mechanicals, all the kit parts you'd normally buy, and then all the printed parts you also need to do on top of that, not to mention all the time that you need to put into assembly. Uh, I think the average assembly time is considered to be about 40 hours on a printer uh, you take the wages from whatever country or, or area you live in uh, you know an average you don't even have to pick your wage if you're you know if you're if you're making high wages obviously that scales one way if you're making lower wages it scales another way but even at a moderate wa wage a, a middle of the road wage from wherever you are for the time to put into there um, you know you're you're, you're you're, 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 you're eating the cost of the complete printer uh, assembled. And it's a decent printer. There's nothing wrong with this printer. You know, for most people, this printer, this K1 printer from Creality, is going to produce better prints out of the box than what you're going to build. And again, I, I'm, I'm saying things that would probably get me in trouble if I had any direct, you know, relationship with with some of these you know the voron team or, or even you know lulzbot or or um uh, uh rat rig or any of these you know these these entities you can't call them manufacturers because they don't really manufacture well rat rig kind of does but um but anyways it, it it doesn't necessarily make sense right now if your primary hobby goal is to print things to build a printer is that's the root key of what i wanted to say is if you if your hobby is as a maker to to make things that may require printed parts buy a printer do your research find out what you need specifically if there isn't one that fits your needs build a printer but if there is one just buy one i mean buy one i mean for, for the cost of this printer you could buy three and probably still be in the same range it would cost to build a Voron 2.4 you could buy three Set one up on your desk, leave the other two in boxes, and when this one breaks, swap it out to a fresh brand new one. You know, it's, it's crazy. Not to mention the ship dates. You know, the, these are things that are located stateside in a lot of cases. And these are available on Amazon even. You don't, you don't have to get it here. Um, but I just, again, I wanted to point out, part of this, this stream right now is my feelings toward the industry where it is right now, the maker industry. Again, the root, root thing is, if you, want your, if you want part of your hobby to be the printer, then build a printer. If you want part of your hobby to have printed parts, buy a printer, a pre-assembled printer. 
I will tell you right now that probably 80% of the people that I speak to, and obviously it's a little bit biased because there's a reason why people are reaching out, but 80% of people I speak to are having an issue with their build or with you know a portion of the build starting or after they built it to tune it. So, you know, skip ahead of that. If you, if you really don't want the printer to be part of your hobby, buy a printer. Okay, so as a comparison, you know, here is, and this is KB3D's website. Hopefully Chris doesn't get upset with me because honestly, if Chris sold printers, I, I, I'd come here anyway. I come here, I come to Chris or KB3D as much as I can um, because his shipping's great. His customer service is wonderful. Uh, he's a good person. Uh, he's helpful, and he has a lot of the same feelings about printing as I do, you know, in terms of the people that are doing it, and he wants to help people that want to help themselves, and wants to be there to, to help the community grow. So this is a switch wire. This is one of the lower cost entry Voron printer kits, and Chris's price is $850. Now, you might be able to find it slightly cheaper someplace else, but you're not going to find it substantially cheaper uh, if it's an LDO version. I will say that this is an LDO version, um, but if you take his and add the additional items that you need, you're at a thousand dollars for an LDO switch wire. You're going to be higher than that for a 2.4 or a Trident. Uh, you're going to be probably slightly lower than that for a Voron Zero, but then you're working on a printer that only has a, I think it's a 1.8, no, it's not even a 1.8, it's a 120 by 120 bed. I don't even remember anymore. So, doing a look here for Voron 2.4, looking at kits, you know, LDO kit, depending on what kit you have, this is a, you know, 1500, 2000. Um, here's one from somebody I don't know for, you know, 779, $800. AliExpress version right here. Um, again, may not be anything wrong with this. My first 2.4 was an AliExpress printer. Uh, it went together, it worked well. Uh, I did have to finagle around with it quite a bit to get it working the way I wanted it, but in the end it worked pretty well. So this kit right here with no printed parts, 679. You know, it's, it's still more money than the fully assembled Creality printer, and it's not assembled, you know. Uh, that's without printed parts. With the parts, you know, you're at it, another, what is that, 779, 859, another $70, $80 right there. Um, all par print, you're adding another $120, which is pretty cheap actually for those parts, by the way. That's a 250 by 250. You go 300 by 300. Uh, it's because of apples to apples, honestly, for the K1. But I would I would not do a smaller than 300 uh, Voron 2.4. Uh, I would consider a 350, but I if I didn't know I needed a 350, I'd stick with a 300, just because everything gets you know exaggerated when it comes to issues you can have or assembly difficulty uh, the, the bigger the printer becomes but you know a 300 by 300 printer with all your parts so basically a printer as it is unassembled so still requires your 40 or so hours plus or minus um, is a thousand dollars nine hundred fifty nine dollars cost of two of those other printers so I, I really wanted to get that off my chest and I know, I know it seems odd for somebody that builds printers on YouTube to say those things, um, but I want to be honest about it, yeah, especially if, if you're somewhere in limbo as to where you want to go. Let's see, catch up on these comments here real quick. Um, oh, there's a ton of them. Wow, you guys are busy. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Let's see. I did a V0 CAN mods. Password alert. Yeah, we just read that one. Uh, a couple of years. Yeah, I started with a V0. Wasn't complicated. That's why I got in this channel. Just finished the v, uh, VT. Uh, V0 and using the Nomi and Nighthawk start. Yeah. And th th that's, that's part of the whole thing I was mentioning earlier about the mods. You know, some mods make it way easier to build a printer. Once you kind of have some idea or some rough idea how the printer goes together, because then you can see how that mod fits in. But doing it out the gate for your first printer, building it with mods where there's no exacting directions. Um, or worse yet, LDO, I'm talking to you again. And this is probably why LDO doesn't give me anything or doesn't even want to talk to me. Um, you can't have 16 manuals, and I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you can't have 16 places to reference something 
based on the fact of the modifications you've made to a printer that already had an assembly manual. You can't say use the Warren assembly ma manual and then say, oh, and you know, look over here every once in a while, see if there's something that's different. Um, <clears throat> LDO needs to fix that. They need to make their own assembly manual. Um, they need to call it out 100% and provide it on like a thumb drive inside the box or something. It would be so easy for them to do. And I know they're making money on their printers, so I don't know why they're not doing that. Other than the fact that nobody's twisting anybody's arm. So, um, and, and you know what, maybe part of that is part of my feeling right now with buy a printer if you need a printer, if you don't want the printer to be the hobby, is because the manufacturers not making it as easy as they could for somebody to build a printer. Uh, let's see here. Uh, find a printer as you go, a great deal of assembly, of forces. Yep. Very good advice. Uh, read, 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 read again. Yep. Uh, now she'll try it with Cam, try it with Cam bus. Yes, that's what I'm building right there. Uh, that'll be a Trident with CAN bus. Uh, also, will be sensorless. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of up in the air at sensorless, and I'll tell you why. Is this Trident build I'm building, I want it to be a precision printer. I want it to print very nice prints. I don't necessarily want huge speed. And in my mind, uh, because I'm going CAN bus, it makes sense to go sensorless. But I also have difficulty with the fact that if I go sensorless, is that less or more accurate than using physical switches? To me, as inaccurate as physical switches are, it seems like it'd be slightly more accurate to do that than to rely on the current draw of a stepper motor to tell you when it's hit an end point. But I don't have any information to back that up. So it's probably gonna go together sensorless. So I'm not gonna be able to use the original uh, Leviathan board I was gonna put in that. Uh, I'm gonna have to find another use for that. Um, Cause that doesn't, I guess, PSA right there. Leviathan board by LDO does not do sensorless homing, or will not do sensorless homing, I should say. Um, do, 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 that's between you guys. That's between you guys. That's complexity. I'm trying to tune it up. Uh, so I was trying to figure out what I was using. Build professional 3D helicopters. Uh, yes, that's what I was trying to figure out. Yep, okay. Sorry, I'm just reading through the notes. I'll talk to you guys too, but um, I upgraded. Do, 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 do. software and cam works great so sorry, yeah so yeah and that's something else that's why i never did cam bus on my other printers a lot of people so a lot of channels um a lot of channels and actually let me roll off a couple of good channels if, if again i told you that my content's limited and i don't just being honest so a lot of channels and you guys already know this but if you don't Steve builds, if, if you're into the whole three hour, four hour live stream building streams, Steve builds is probably the number one place I would send you. Um, he does a great job. Uh, his de de demeanor is awesome. He's a, he's a nice person. Um, so uh, great, great place to go there. Um, I'm not, um, if, if you, if you like, if you like your instruction with a show, I think Nero does a great job with that. Um, he does, he puts a lot of his own opinions into things, which is great because personally, I like to have at least three opinions on everything. So, uh, Nero is a good one. He's very opinionated, nothing wrong with that. So, uh, he does a good job with that. And you probably are aware of those two channels, but, uh, made with layers, which is Thomas Senlader, uh, in Germany, uh, very instructional, very good stuff there. If you're into 3D printing in general, uh, if you have questions about that, I just did a video in the past day, I just watched it today, uh, about different inserts that had nothing to do with uh, the, the, the heat certs that we use today. Uh, he's using some different stuff to see how well they worked. <clears throat> some great stuff there. CNC Kitchen, um, which is also great. Um, I'm trying to think of some other folks as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of other 3D printer guys. Uh, Vector 3D is great. Uh, Teaching Tech is great. Uh, so there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a good handful of people in there, very instructional. I have some great information out there for that. So that being said, there's that. Uh, when CAN works, great. Yeah, so CAN bus. So I, I didn't want to do CAN bus, or I've stayed away from doing CAN bus quite a bit, because, uh, especially for, for a new builder, because in my mind, and I still hold true to this, and I think if you've done CAN bus, and especially if you've had issues with CAN bus, you'll agree, 
is that not only you're dealing with um, you know the possibility of having some issues at the far end, meaning you know your tool head or whatever, uh, with connections there, but you're also possibly dealing with issues at your connection point, your conversion from you know your your connections to the CAN bus, and then on top of that, you're adding a software layer uh, interface between those two physical layers that also could have issues. So you've multiplied the possibility of issues by three or two at least, um, you know, because you don't have wires going directly to your tool head. You have a conversion happening and you have multiple physical connections to that. And then on top of that, you have the software as well. So uh, that's the reason why CAN bus kind of um, is tough for me to, to, to go out there and say, if you're, if you're building your first parameter, use CAN bus. Now the flip side of that is, uh, especially if you get a kit and you have all your, your, your harnesses pre-crimped and everything like that, is that with CAN bus, there's a lot less wiring to do um, through the printer and a lot less complexity in terms of, you know, doing that crimping. And that specific. You guys got to understand, the first 3D printer I built, uh, I had to buy silicone wire and crimp every crimp. Uh, nothing came pre-assembled, no harnesses or anything like that. So every single wire that was crimped needed to be crimped. Every single length of wire needed to be cut to length. Every single harness that was made had to be made. <laughs> you know, it's not quite as bad as some of the first ones there. I, I, I didn't have to solder together any circuit boards, but um, those wires didn't always come the way that they come now. Uh, form by kits at $600, no printed parts. Always found that funny. If I could print parts, I wouldn't be looking for a 3D printer. So, <clears throat> I, um, Steven, that's you by the way. Um, so I'll tell you a quick story about that. So I, when I built my first four printer, I had my Ender 5 already. Uh, I had it for a while. Um, and I bought a four, a form box kit and the kit doesn't come with printed parts. Most kits don't come with printed parts. Um, back when I did it, printed forward was just starting up and they were out 16 to 18 months to, to get parts. Uh, I don't know how patient you are but I am not 18 months patient. So I found somebody on eBay selling printed parts for the Voron and it worked out okay because back then, you know, there wasn't so many revisions of these parts. These parts were pretty standardized as to what you were getting. So I ordered the parts and I started building with those parts and I had some issues with those parts. Meanwhile, while I was doing that, I started playing around more with some of the materials, the ABS, the ASA, polycarbonate, things like that on my ender. Uh, I bought a tent to put around my ender so that it would be semi-heated on the inside. Um, I Actually, the catalyst to all this was changing the MCU that came with the ender into a board that I could put clipper on. And then once I got a bow clipper, I found out, you know, about boron and things like that. So um, anyway, so I had this ender printer with a uh, micro Swiss hot end on it that was inside of a um, Creality um, tent and it was running Clipper. So then I started printing my own parts in, in, in that unit. You know, I figured out slowly how to actually print parts even on that ender printer back then. And I will tell you, and it doesn't apply to print it forward. I think those parts for the most part are really good, but for, for my experience, the parts I was printing on my Ender 5 um, looked about as good as the ones I bought from somebody I built a Warren printer and decided to you know, do their own PIF. Um, but the printed parts that I purchased did not have the correct amount of infill in them and whatnot. I could literally take you know, a, um, a, a, a Z drive, for instance, the parts, the plastic parts for a Z drive, and put them on a scale and measure you know, how many grams there were. And then take an actual printed part that I printed out of ABS as well and measure that. And it'd be a 20 or so percent difference um, just because that person was less than trustworthy, um, which kind of upset me. It was part of why I started making videos because uh, I felt sl slighted a little bit that somebody, you know, in the hobby community would, would do something like that. But that's the past. So I think there's a lot of instances where people can can print their own parts or they have friends that can print parts or there's a uh, maker space where they can print parts 
or they can you know buy parts on and now you can buy aluminum parts and things like that i don't want to talk about that but um those are all options <clears throat> all right uh so issue let's see so the issue that they end up being different guides getting confusing i recommend the first build more on due default i agree 100 percent. and that, that's kind of the root thing is if you're building your first printer build it um to the to the to the manual 100 percent um did you look at the CFS and your Cooper Morons? Uh, I have not. Uh, Kenneth, uh, CFS. And they work to get that on there. CFS. I'm not sure what CFS is. I thought I knew for a second, but can you clarify that, Kenneth? What CFS? Maybe I'm behind. I've been in a bed for two weeks. Um, you will find that you have an LDL, for example, bounce between different guys already. Had CAN bus in your three or four. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and two or three websites on top of that as well. Uh, I understand. Agree to have much, and yeah, it's confused. Yeah, that's that's my biggest problem is uh, people that get confused. And, and I I love helping you guys, and I love that you guys help each other as well. But you know, the manufacturers at some point should be held accountable for for producing products that are more easy to follow, um, not rest on the fact that they have a name that everybody basically builds, and not rest on the fact that you know if somebody builds that printer online. Uh, on a YouTube video that you can follow what they did because that might not be the printer that you want specifically and they might be modding the heck out of it, you know? Um, my friend's K1, new to printing uh, and would not have gotten into the hobby uh, if they needed to build. Prints nice, but really nice for money, yeah. Um, and that's the thing, you know, if you buy a pre-made printer for, I think 500 is a sweet spot, but for around that range, and you get into it and you like it and then you realize what the shortcomings are at that point you know whether it be speed or material availabilities or multicolor or you know whatever that might be or the fact that you're just really interested you, you you have a 3d printer you print stuff you say oh, that's pretty cool i can make physical things but you're like you know what i want to make the thing that makes the thing like i said 3d printers or when you build a 3d printer in and itself is its own hobby you know it's not i'm into 3d printing it's i build 3d printers um, if you're into the 3d printing hobby and that's all you want to be into, that's all you're interested in building a 3d printer can be a fun pastime, but it's a hobby. You're, you're, you're in a hobby at that point. The number one benefit I will say about building a 3d printer is the experience you gather. And on top of that, the fact that you indefinitely can build, um, you know, or, or create new parts for it if something breaks. I mean, it's kind of the big thing. Because the, the parts to build the 3D printer, if you're building one, are off the shelf. And then the printed parts are stuff that you should be able to make in-house. <clears throat> and one other thing, if you're building a 3D printer, I tell every people that talk to me are going to laugh. But the um, first thing you print with a printer with a printer you build is replacement parts to the printer you build. Uh, because you're going to break parts eventually. And you're going to need them. And if it's your only printer, you're going to be in a bad place. Uh, I'll see how I've been in Discord you guys there to experience with different builds yep uh, and good reason to post that again uh, I'll see here uh, my centralist 2.2 are doing great good to hear Robert uh, why centralist Nighthawk they're coming out with uh, like a month has an AX uh, X sensor pin uh, and then you can do a Y sensor yeah you can do XY right from the head um, centralist is nice because you're eliminating the wires um, you know, asking why sensorless is kind of like asking why anything else. Uh, it's a personal thing. Um, you know, the first the first reason for sensorless, obviously, is because you limit the amount of wires you have. Uh, the second reason would be you eliminate a mechanical uh, item. So if I, if I had to answer your question there, and, you know, you asked me that, you know, as a group chat type thing, like we are right now, my answer would be probably because at that point you're eliminating a point of failure, which is the actual micro switch. Um, so you're getting rid of two micro switches or at least one if you do sensorless. Um, but other than that, you know, there's limited reasons if, if they're on tool. The, the, other, the other issue I have is when you put your, your, your switches on your tool head is most of the printers aren't configured normally for that to be that way. So you have to add additional parts. I'm not a big fan of adding additional parts to my tool head if I don't need to. Uh, I think a tool head should weigh as little as possible. 
Um, I think it's one of the big things that helps with speed. You know, it's, it's kind of obvious. Uh, if you shake your arm around in the air and have nothing in it, it's easy. You take a five pound weight and do the same thing, good luck. Uh, so um, the, the, the less that you can have in your tool head, the better off you, I feel you are. So, um, and that's also why I don't get into the crazy uh, cooling systems and other tool heads they have. Um, you know, there are some things that do interest me, uh, you know, with, with drive extruders and things like that. But uh, a lot of these tool heads add a lot of things I don't think you necessarily need, which means it adds weight for little or no, you know, benefit. So I'll see here. Uh, you name most of YouTube's are follower. That's great. I watch Steve every week. Um, wires just bits and bytes. Every silicone wire uh, was black too. So had, yes, you're absolutely right. They were all black. Um, and there was, was it, um, they're all 24 gauge except for your power leads, which are 22, something like that. I, I forget. And then we all switched over to um, a PTFE wire or something similar. Uh, again, modifications made by the community, you know, quick modifications. Manufacturers don't make modifications that quickly. Uh, if you use PCB, you got some great parts in AU. I just did. Uh, Corella, if you want to knock off AMS. Yeah, um, for the most part, we're talking about Asian countries. Um, and so there's another thing, and it's personal, you know. I, I don't have a problem with knockoff equipment because two things. One is, if there was never a knockoff, then we'd never be where we are today. If Henry Ford invented the automobile and then basically wouldn't allow anybody to build an automobile, we'd still be driving around in something that looks really antiquated. Uh, you know, and it, technology through the years for almost everything that we have uh, has, has been a knockoff of a knockoff of a knockoff. Now, knockoffs go two ways. They go knockoff to make it cheaper and they go knockoff to make it better. Knockoff to make it cheaper, and when I say cheaper, I mean in a bad way, I have a problem with. Knockoff to make it better or more cost effective is good. Now, if you can make it better and more cost effective, all the better. And I kind of feel that's what Creality is doing right there with theirs. So I don't know that I have a problem with it being a knockoff uh, because all of it's borrowed technology. Um, oh, let's see here. Great advantage of building a printer is the TS. Yes. Um, print part plays a part. Hog printer, easy symbol, general rule is two is one, one is none. Yes. Redundancy is key. Uh, person multiple three printers only has one that works. That's not true. <laughs> I have multiple that work. Uh, I already have two. Some state not working. Need a tuning. Okay, I'm back to. I'm caught up finally. Um, actually, he didn't invent the automobiles. Invented a building system to build cars. Uh, the. Um, um, yeah, you could you could argue that um, the building system to build cars was based on history I'm aware of, was actually borrowed from the gun manufacturers. Uh, so basically he took uh, what gun manufacturers were doing and basically streamlined it into processes that were individualized so people were doing the same job over and over again. So he didn't even invent that, if you want to talk about that. But, you know, again, it, it's, it's, it's every little thing that you build upon. And, and that's, you know what, that's what's great about all these hobbies. You know, all the hobbies I'm involved in, you take small pieces and you make big pieces out of them because you're adding pieces to pieces. Um, when you take a printer, you know, you take a motion system or you take an idea or you take a mod and you add that to something, it makes it better. You get a better hole from the parts that you have. Um, you know, same thing with when you build like an arcade machine, a thing over there, uh, or I have some upstairs too is you're taking a computer and you're doing software and then you're doing controls and you're doing stuff, you're always adding stuff into it. Now, is that, is that, you know, is that taking it or is that using it in a way? You know, is that modifications that make it more feasible for what you're doing with it? Uh, let's see here, assembly line. Yes, the assembly line. Correction, that's what Steve said. Yes, okay, cool. Um, where are we at? Let me bring up something else. Do, do, do. And uh, you guys have been great today, by the way. Thank you very much for, for welcoming me back. Um, I'm going to be jumping back, like I said, this week and trying to get some, some printer built for everybody to do. Um, 
I also want to say a couple different things. One is I'm not doing a hula dance um, for, for Renee. Uh, you send me a video of you doing a hula dance and I'll do one. Uh, let's see here. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, on the Discord, if you do decide to join the Discord, uh, I'm on there frequently. There's a good group of folks up there. You know, if, you, if you're interested in that type of thing, please do. Um, my email I gave out earlier, I can give that out again. Um, if you have a engrossing question or something that's going to require back and forth uh, more than once or twice, Email is usually better than leaving comments on videos. I will tell you that right now, although it doesn't help me on YouTube when, when it's not a comment. So even if you leave a comment saying, hey, I got this question, but I'm going to reach you via email, that would be awesome. Um, I get probably, well, recently because of the lack of videos, it's gone down, but I get between five and 20 emails a day. Uh, so I try to get back to those within 24 or 48 hours. So if you're in a real big rush, I apologize. I do what I can. Uh, on Discord, if you message me at um, Build a Basement, um, I tend to get back to that probably within 12 to 24 hours. Uh, comments, I tend to get back to within 12 to 24 hours, but again, that's usually quick stuff. And a lot of times it's just a thank you or something like that because you thanked me for something. I thank you for leaving a comment. Um, let's see, one other thing that came to light to me in the past 48 hours is. Um, the first layer uh, YouTube channel. Uh, a friend of mine, Rich, out of Canada. Uh, sounds like he's starting to turn back up his channel. He's been gone now for a little bit over a year. So I want you to keep an eye out for that if you're interested in his stuff. He does a lot of stuff with, um, um, I mean, it fits the name of his channel, where he talks about a lot of the basics of printing. Uh, and it, although, although it's basics, the same talks, topics are gone over um, not year over year, but they change over time. So, you know, what's normal five years ago for printing, you know, ABS, maybe using a slurry or something like that changes today. We're using a PEI sheet and temperatures and things like that. So he's got a back catalog uh, of quite a few, and I think tens of thousands of uh, subscribers. So very good channel there. And I'm happy to welcome Rich back as soon as he gets back. And like I said, keep your eyes open, uh, to check out his channel if you get a chance. Um, top of that let me see here what do we got going on here renee's printing or sending out that uh yep kerm yep that's me uh what's going to be this year what's going to bring this year in the world through um you know i i think robbie uh i think i think we see the most happen uh in the latter part of the year with 3d printing I think a lot of people that are involved in it uh, tend to not do a lot during the summers. It's similar to my situation. But I think we're going to see servos or digital stepper motors become more mainstream. Um, I think the multi-material printer is going to become more mainstream. I don't think we're going to see main manufacturers uh you know your your crealities your solvals your prusas uh all those companies i don't think we're going to see those prices drop too much further i think you might start seeing those go up slightly i do think that prusa is probably right now um prusa specifically uh might be in a slightly not optimal space because of the premiums they charge for their printers and I'm not saying they're in the wrong for charging those premiums because those premiums come with a level of customer service that most other manufacturers don't provide. But I think it's been proven over time that people would rather buy something uh, less expensive and worry about the service when that time comes. Um, there's just so many outlets and inlets for, for, for finding out things these days that, that it's become less of an issue. Uh, so I think I think we might see some changes over at Prusa in terms of their pricing, which would be nice because I, I like Prusa printers. Uh, I think that they're, they're going to reduce their prices even further, though. Um, I think you're going to see probably less and less of the random, you know, Ender clones and things like that. I think people are buying. I don't. I don't think so many Ender threes are being sold anymore. The prices are just getting too close. Um, 
I think there's still people buying a $150 printer, but I think there's also people that when they first get into 3D printing and they see a $150 printer and they see so many that are in the three to 500 range, they start to wonder why and they do a little research and then they probably are going to stay away from those printers. So I think you're gonna see those trickle off a little bit. Um, I probably, I hate saying this part, but I probably think uh, over the next 12 to 24 months, maybe 36 months, we might start seeing some you know, uh, public or governmental uh, legislation uh, on, on plastics in general, on filaments and things, uh, maybe recycling programs and things like that, which uh, I'm not against. Um, you know, whether that be paying a deposit when you buy plastic or something, I don't know what's gonna happen there, but I know, and I can't switch any of my cameras around when I'm doing live views, but um, I know behind this camera, I'm looking at it right now, I have a wall with 50-ish spools of filament on it, and that's a lot of plastic. Um, so, and I'm not the only one. So, I think uh, I think we're gonna have to do that. Um, <coughs> linear rails. I think I missed something on that, Mark. Let me bring up your messages here. Linear rails. What does linear rails mean? Oh, linear rails on printers, maybe. Uh, more linear rails. Um, so I think linear rails are, 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 are more and more mainstream. I think, um, I think magnetic drives, um, or large scale magnetic drives are going to become more li uh, uh, high end, but they're going to be more printers using those. If you haven't seen those yet, uh, have I ever built a tool changer? No, I have not built a tool changer. Uh, Renee, who's in this right now has been uh, trying to force me to build uh, the erratic rabbit carrot feeder, whatever it's called, enraged rabbit carrot feeder for a long time. Uh, they're finally coming up with new versions of that, modifications and revisions that starting to make that look pretty good to me. Uh, but I'll tell you what I told him um, is that I've seen plenty of videos with people building those things. I have not seen a lot of videos with people using those things. So I, I don't know how those are long term. Uh, as for an actual printer that is uh, uh, filament changing, uh, I am a firm believer that a multi-head printer would be a better solution than a filament changing printer, uh, which is why I, eventually I probably will build the black box, which is on KB3D. Uh, actually, let me let me show that off for a second. Let me get over to KB3D here. And so the black box printer, for those that don't know, uh, is an ex well, semi-exclusive with KB3D. Uh, and... I'll go ahead and just play this video real quick, and I don't think you'll hear the audio, but um, this is pretty neat. This is the printer. When I build a tool changer, as of right now, this is the tool changing printer I want to build. So hopefully Chris doesn't get upset with me playing this video. He's probably excited to have me play this video, but this is his little <coughs> sales video he did in-house. It's a very nice printer. Very, very, or relatively expensive, but it, it's expensive because of what it is. Robert, yes, I will see you later as well. Hopefully, if you're still here, you heard me. If not, I will talk to you later. <clears throat> so, yeah, keep quiet so you can watch this. I'll, I'll actually make some comments. So, that's a water cooled, and then uh, actually, there's little words that tell you what I was going to say, anyways. So, I don't have to say anything, really. That's pretty much the end of the video anyways there. So anyways, that's that's the black box. Uh, that is a, I will call it a 95% work in progress. So it's a, it's a pretty nice unit. Um, it's, that's kind of direction I'm leaning towards uh, when I build one. So yeah, uh, let's see here. What else we at? Yeah, more linear rails. See, so the problem with linear rails uh, from a manufacturing standpoint is it requires additional maintenance. And if something requires additional maintenance, um, people are lazy. I'm not saying you're lazy, but people in general are lazy. So if they're not maintained, it causes issues. If it causes issues, that means customer service relations issues for the manufacturer they have to deal with, which is why there's actually such a slow progression to bring in linear rails because they require maintenance to happen every so often, you know, every three months or so um, that's that's a tough or a hard pill to swallow or a jagged pill to swallow whatever you want to say yeah so <clears throat> all 
Oh, evil fish. That wasn't an evil fish. Come on. That was a cute little fish. It was like Nemo. Trademark. Hopefully I don't get flagged for that. Um, anyways, this has been great, guys. Um, like I said, I don't know who's still around. I don't know how many people watch this. I don't know how many people are on. I haven't looked at any of the details of this video stream. I just wanted to do something because I've been out for so long um, to kind of prove I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm still working. Um, but great talking with you guys. I'm going to probably button this up here relatively soon unless anybody's got some additional questions. Um, but, um, yeah, so we're going to get back on the Trident build. We're going to get that done. Uh, we're going to, at some point, get back into the Super Voron printer. And if you got ideas for making it more super, uh, whether that be, you know, all-wheel drive or um, not doing essentials, home and using a Nighthawk or whatever, email me, leave a comment, do something. Uh, give me or join the Discord and... And uh, that's AliExpress. Uh, and uh, and let me know your thoughts. Um, just like everything else, I, I, I really do appreciate and bring in everybody's thoughts and, and comments and everything as much as I can. Um, not, not every single one of them is used. Not every single comment can I do. Not every single um, you know option is out there for me every single time. But I do what I can. So I appreciate it. I thank you all. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, weekend, Saturday, Sunday, wherever you're at in the world. And um, yeah, let's see here. Every time feeling better, working on honey list. Yep, I have medicating some dash. Yeah, um, I'm getting better. I'm I'm 95% there. Still a little stuffy though. Uh, built business Twitter. Sure, sure. Yeah, thank you, Renee, for all those. And uh, with that, I bear you all with the fruits of your labor in terms of 3D printing. And uh, I wonder if. Um, or I want you guys all to have a, a great time printing and in your lives and with your families and um, get a hold of me if you want to. I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it. See you soon.